Father God, we come as thankful people. We think of our blessings, the presence you have given to us. How that when we ask, if we watch and we're aware and we're open, we receive. And how we should come back and say thank you when you do. We've had enough tea. We've had a roof. We've had clothes. We've had transportation. We've had friends. We've had a church family that loves us and cares about us and lifts us, lifts us up, prays for us. But we say thank you. And all of this comes from you because you instituted peace and love and giving and forgiveness and grace and mercy. Those things would not be here if it weren't for you. Lord, we lift up our prayer concerns. We just ask that you give peace and comfort. As only you can give. An understanding that goes beyond us. But we thank you for the many praises. Thank you for the joys. Thank you for the answered prayers. Lord, there's a song I'm thinking of that says, Light my fire. Light the fire in my heart. That I may burn bright. And Jesus said, Lift up your light that everyone can see. Put your light on a pedestal and hold it high. Let everyone in the world see who you are and what you stand for. And that you stand for peace and love and mercy and grace. Lord, light our fire. Ignite us. Set us ablaze. Make us a fire. Make us burning bright. You would have us witness to the world. We have the message. You have given us the message. Help us to pass it on. Lord, we thank you for a cup that runs over. Be with us now as we say the cup together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Jesus washes his disciples' feet. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water in a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter and said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, Peter said, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my head and my hands as well. Jesus answered, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said, not every one was clean. 
When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I just did for you? He asked him. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. I think giving up ourselves is the hardest thing we have to do. It's just not a natural thing. It doesn't come with us physically. We have to overcome that. We have to make decisions every day. We have choices to make. And giving up of ourselves is the absolute hardest thing we can do. Jesus got down and took the lowliest servant's place and washed his disciples' feet. Any one of those disciples could have done that. But they didn't. So Jesus did it for them. He knew they weren't going to. So he did it for them. And he said, look at the example I am giving for you. Here I am, your Lord, your Master, your Teacher, your everything, and I'm doing this for you. Do that for everyone you come in contact with. When we celebrate this supper, we remember Jesus and what he was. Everlasting Father, your word states that as often as I eat this bread and drink this cup, I proclaim your death until you come. I thank you for offering me this hope even in your death. Thank you for this communion, which is a symbol of the realization of a spiritual union between you and I. Thank you for not only washing away my sins on the cross, but for welcoming me into a bond with you. Amen. If you would like to take in unison, I will be taking after I break the bread and bless the cup. The Bible tells us that as they were eating, Jesus got up, took the loaf, broke it in two. This is an example of my body broken for you. Jesus gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, each of you. This is my body. In the same way, when they had finished eating, he took the cup, asked God to bless it, and said, This is my blood given for you. Take, drink of this, all of you. This is my blood given for you.
that we should give honor to you with the first fruits of our wealth. Accept our tithes and offerings as a gift of worship to you. Multiply what we give for the effective growth of your kingdom. May Christ dwell in our hearts through faith, so that we, being rooted and grounded in love, may have the strength to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. May we be filled with all the fullness of God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The scripture reading for today comes from Acts, chapter 8, verses 30 through 38. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearing is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can, <clears throat> who can speak of his descendants? For his life is taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with the very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, Look, here's water. What can stand in the way of me being baptized? <clears throat> and, he, and he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. May God add his blessing to the reading of this word.
streets are four times as crowded through the week as they are on the weekend. Uh, Saturday and Sunday are the slow days. Well, you can hardly get up and down the sidewalk, uh, fight your way, being a little guy, anyhow. But we didn't make it. We had a good time and, and we've seen a lot. So when the trip, uh, the bus trip to go see the Creation Museum and the Ark uh, came up, I, uh, uh, suicide we up again. So uh, next Sunday we were taking off on a bus trip to go see the Creation Museum and, and the Ark. And uh, I certainly had this coming. But, uh, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> Several people said, well, be sure to take some pictures, and I'm going to try to take pictures along the way so I can bring it back and, and show you some of what we see. But here it's really interesting, and the art is really awesome, awesome thing to, to see. So we're looking forward to it. It's a five-day trip. We'll be back Friday or Saturday or something like that, and uh, hopefully uh, invigorated with lots of uh, energy and ready to go and uh, ready to lead you on to bigger and better things. And, Read one time that there was a minister got up. This was a brave guy. He had courage. And he said, Love, people, love. And then he sat down and he stared at the congregation for 30 minutes. He got up, gave the benediction, and they had the closing hymn, and that was it. thought it was the best sermon they'd ever heard in their life. <laughs> Half the people were furious and were calling for him to be tar and feathered. I kind of forgot about tar and feather until I watched the music band over the fourth. <laughs> Someone asked me if we had an exciting fourth, and I said we sure did. <laughs> we watched the Smithsonian Channel, uh, uh, a flyover of all the states and the national parks, the places of interest, which was really kind of nice. <laughs> what if we lived in a situation, in an environment, where everyone treated everyone with total love, and every place you went, everyone was your servant, Everyone treated you like a queen or a king? We pray in the Lord's Prayer, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do we really try to make that happen? Do we try to make that come about? I remember on my way home from the Promise Keepers Conference in Kansas City, the police who were directing traffic were so frustrated that they couldn't get the cars out of the parking lot because everyone else was saying, here, you go ahead, you go ahead, and we're waving everybody else on. And the police couldn't get them to leave. Never seen this before. After the Holy Spirit came,
the Jewish establishment was terrified. People were going over to this new religion. The chief peace priests and the scribes and the, and the Pharisees had always had things their own way. They were controlling everything. They were getting all the loot. Everything was coming to them. All the praise, the honor, the glory was coming to them and the money too. And they were losing out. Hey, something's got to be done. Things have got to change. We can't have this. So they persecuted the church. People had to leave in the middle of the night because they were being drug out and put in prison and it wasn't any secret who the Christians were. They couldn't make a secret of themselves. But with that, Christianity spread. They took with them the seed of that gospel. They took with them that knowledge. They took with them the desire. They took with them the overflowing cup. They took with them that spark of fire. And they lighted it everywhere they went. Philip went to Samaria. Priest down there. Excited the people. Then he went on. And here we find him walking down the Bastion Road. And a chariot comes by and this fellow who is big in the uh, uh, kingdom of the next next uh, country uh, who has lots and lots of authority is reading the Bible. And so Philip goes trotting along beside him there and says, hey, <laughs> you know what you're reading? And the guy says, how can I understand it unless someone explains it to me? What is it? a sheep going to the shearer? What is a, a lamb going to the slaughter? What's that mean? So Philip gets up and explains it to him about what the gospel has to say and everything from that point forward to Jesus dying on the cross and giving his life for each and every person who comes uh, to him, believing in him and trusting in him, having faith in him, giving up themselves. They come to a stream and the eunuch says, what is there to keep me from being baptized? Philip said, you come down here with me and I will baptize you right now. If you want this and you really believe and trust in it, then come ahead. You are welcome in the kingdom of God. All you have to confess is a belief and faith in Jesus Christ and you are welcome. One thing I love about the disciples of Christ is they are welcoming, they are inclusive, and they allow anyone to come in. They include everyone. So Philip baptizes the big man of Ethiopia, and he goes on his way rejoicing. But he takes with him that spark of knowledge, that spark of belief, that spark of fire that lights the fire. He took with that, that with him. Let's go back and take a look at that scripture. Philip is going along there, and he's trotting along the side the chariot. He's trying to long. That takes some effort. How much effort did we put out this week to spread the kingdom of God, to spread the knowledge of God? Did we put ourselves out in it? Did we go trying to walk beside somebody or try to chase them down the sidewalk and say, hey, you know about the kingdom of God? Probably not. But did we put out any effort? Did we at least pray for someone to witness to? Is there ever too much prayer? Is there ever too much peace? Is there ever too much forgiveness? Is there ever too much grace? Is there ever too much love? Is there ever too much God? Is there ever too much Jesus? Do we ever pray too much? Did we pray for the opportunity? Did we pray for someone? You know, prayer is a strange, strange thing. Uh, how God answers that prayer is, is just amazing, and we never know exactly how it's going to be. Uh, we may pray for one thing and get answered over here, coming in from this side when we were looking this way. But God is there. And he does answer our prayers if we just look back and see, oh, yeah, wow, why didn't, why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I see that coming? So Philip was 
footnotes and effort there. Did Philip assume that the eunuch knew everything and understood everything he was reading? Well, we can back up and say, well, wait a minute. <laughs> he was guided to the Holy Spirit. Of course he knew things. But are you ever tempted by the Holy Spirit? Are you ever uh, dodged a little bit? Are you ever pushed a little bit? Or somebody uh, kicking you in the ribs here a little? Oh, that's an elbow. Kicking you. Yeah. Looks well, like you must call me. Elbow in your ribs. Let's say a nudge you. Let's be nudged. And say, hey, hey, did you see that opportunity? Did you see you had an opportunity there? Did you know that opportunity was open to you? And maybe after you got home, you got to think about that. Why in the world didn't I? Well, if we had been praying for that, would we have remembered? Would it have come up and said, oh, yeah, okay. Hey, what do you think about this? Just as a casual uh, subject of conversation, what do you think about the way God answered? How do you feel about that? Philip did not assume that the eunuch knew more about the Bible than he did. Philip did not assume that the eunuch was understanding everything he was reading. How many people are there in our community who would love to understand more about God? Shut the garage door and they go watch the news 
until they're so depressed that they go to bed and cry. Yeah, I get that drink a little bit there. We've come to become a, a people of country of individuals. Become a country of individuals. What do I hear most of all? Man, I wish we could do something to get together. I wish we could do something to socialize. I wish we could just come together. And we miss it. We miss it. And that says something really, really good about the church. That we love each other. We want to be with each other. We want to interact with each other. We want to share with each other. And that's good. And that will be there. And that will happen someday. We can't be stupid. But it will happen someday. But isn't it a wonderful thing that we have that desire to come together because we draw strength from each other and discussing uh, the Bible verses and, and talking about them and bringing them up and wobbling them around. That's good. That's good because every time I share my faith with you, it strengthens me and it strengthens you. And the more we share, the more we give, the more we take, the stronger we are, the more powerful force we are, and our, our light, our spark that we have burns a little bit brighter. Emily Scott, who is uh, directing church camp, I think it was last week, used to say she came to church camp just to get her, her spark uh, ignited and, and glowing again, that it needed to glow blue and red, it needed to be uh, hot and, and fiery.
the foolishness of God is wisdom to men. The foolishness of men. The wisdom of men is foolishness to God. The wisdom of God is foolishness to men. The wisdom of God is we give ourselves up. We give ourselves up. And Jesus said, if you keep your life for yourself, you're going to lose it. If you give yourself up to everybody else, you'll find it. Doesn't make sense. Foolishness. But it works. It works. I'm here to tell you it works. You feel valuable. You feel good. You're doing something that God wants you to do. And it, it's, it's a piece of understanding that goes beyond. He gives himself up. will find his life. He who saves his life for himself will lose it. Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. What are you praying for for a church? What are you praying for for a church? Put out some uh, surveys and no. It's hard. It's hard to visualize our church in five years. What can it be? What it can't be, we don't know. We don't know what God has for us. But we know what we can do. We can share the word. We can share the love. And we can pray. Have you changed a lot? changed a life? Have you made a difference in a life? Is there anything more important than making a difference in a life or saving a life? A lot of lives out there that need to be saved. We have the message. We have the peace. We have the experience. We have the truth.